Welcome back. So, yeah. Uh, as usual, I'm fixing stockfish issues and leech chess issues and just trying to make things better. Um, I happen to notice just now, I was about to go in and start coding and fixing things because, you know, it's the end of the workday. And what do you enjoy doing at the end of a day more than coding? Um, so, that said, um, yeah, for racing kings, there's a condition where one king can make it to the top of the board before the other. And um, so this can be problematic. And indeed, a use case was found where both kings are nearing the top of the board. Um, and it's just not evaluated properly. And so um, this is an excellent issue report. It demonstrates the problem as concisely as possible and shows that the computer does not, in fact, well, huh, I don't know. This down here seems to suggest it does find the best move of king to g8, um, but that doesn't win. Um, it's just a draw. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, what this player needs to do is move their queen to the back rank or somehow prevent this king over here from progressing to one of these two squares by putting up whatever obstructions are necessary to prevent that king from reaching the back rank. And then white can reach the back rank with their king. Um, so I self-assigned this a couple hours ago because I got a mobile notification saying there was an issue. I looked briefly at this, saw, yep, that looks definitely like an issue. It looks like everything's reported, so this can be as concisely as possible in the most descriptive manner possible, saying exactly what we know about the issue, providing as much information as we do know while not providing more than necessary. Um, and really, I think this entire description is necessary. These are the duplication steps right here. You type in this command, type in that command, type in D to display the board, and then do an evaluation and figure out that the best move is king g8, which it's not. The best move is to actually stop black from promoting, or from moving the king to the other side. Um, also identifying exactly what change introduced the problem. So I self-assigned this a couple hours ago saying, yeah, that looks like an issue. I'll get around to addressing it. Lo and behold, Ian or Fabian has beaten me to it. Um, or Niklaus has. I have, I'm just reading through this now. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Rick of Fate. I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, they have already gone through this and looked into this in further depth than I have. Uh, so let's just review what we see here. Um, yeah, so they point out that this change treats a king to the back rank as a check, which forces the opponent to evade check, which can be incorrect. Um, well, actually, I don't know that advancing to the back rank, evading, evading must be correct, because anything other than a king move in response to the king move um, would be an instant loss. Uh, so this itself is okay. Removing this early return should fix the issue. Let me think about that one. I don't understand that. I read the diff several times, thinking the early return was sound. Um, yeah, we should add this to the test suite, but... Um, okay, submitted a test for a simplification. This is interesting. Um, so wait, this was fixed with... <laughs> okay, Fabian fixed this, Niklas... Uh, merged the fix. That's okay. Uh, hey, if they're all on the same page with this, I'm not going to stand up against it. 
unless I have a proper test in place first. But you know, hmm. Oh, oh, wait a minute. The problem isn't that evasions are wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the, this is this code is problematic. Uh, this code is the problem because even though a check per se cannot happen, what can happen is one king reaching the other side and the other side needing to make a king move to address it. Um, so this fix is fine. This fixes exactly the problem. Um, uh, so let me go back. I have a test for a simplification. The simplification is in the move generator generating evasions. Um, hang on. What's this about? Oh, this is just saying that we're not going to treat a king to the back rank as check anymore. Hmm, I have another idea for simplification. I would think that the king to the back rank is actually considered check because the only response that makes any sense is moving the king, I don't know. I guess it's not check. So we don't need all the special handling code in place. Uh, oh, plus we're able to get rid of this block, which... Um, I had introduced another block that looked just like this. I was trying to get that other block pass testing and it wasn't doing well. Um, yeah, so... Let's see, do we need any code here for... No. We don't need any kind of special check detecting code because the normal routine should work just fine. Yeah. This looks good, um, particularly in light of the fact that I'm trying to simplify um, just the stockfish code overall. So, let's see, do I still have this tab open? Thanks. In hindsight, that simplification Makes great sense. And well, so and um, treating and my recent test suggests that handling uh, king to the back rank as check uh, causes, uh, well, it makes great sense. And we don't need to focus on my test, but now as of this test, um, let's go over to the test page and load up. This one must have failed. Yeah. As of this test, uh, we see no benefit of uh, treating a king promotion as check. Our uh, handling like a check. Um, that 
does not improve performance. So, yeah. They have fixed the issue. I have commented what I know, which is that. Um, yeah, this is absolutely correctly recognized. We plus one this, uh, uh, plus one that. I fully agree with it. Um, yep, this is exactly correct. Um, yeah. Having positions in the bench suite would not be a terrible idea. Um, I'm not sure. Actually, this is a really good position to add to the suite. Um, ay, ay, ay. I guess I'll add it. I guess this is what I can resolve to do. Copy. Let's clear that out. I don't know that... Well, okay, let's... I know, just having reviewed their code, reviewed all their comments, everything they're saying makes perfect sense. They say trust but verify, so I guess we're going to do trust but verify. Get checkout master. Get diff. Wait, what was I doing here? Um, oh, search. It's trying to improve performance of search. Um, branch, get check out. Yeah, we're going to leave that be. It's just a whole can of worms, what I was trying to do this morning to improve performance. I was just astonished that my test result was coming up negative. Um, I thought I was going to be able to tab over to it, but I don't have it any open anymore. But I don't need that. Um, and all that complicated code does almost nothing to improve performance. You can't out-optimize the, the compiler. It's just too good. Um, branch delete racing gives check. Okay. Um, get pull origin master. So pull in all those changes. Uh, let's take a look at the benchmark. And in fact, well, before we do that, make clean, make build. Um, just verify the test. This should be pretty trivial. And once the test is verified, then add this position to the benchmark, uh, uh, the test suite. Which I think doesn't have any positions for Racing Kings other than the start position. And while certainly we have to be able to analyze the start position, it'd be good if the, uh, this position were handled properly as well. Um, Oh, I wonder how that was discovered. It's not like he just went out there on his own to look for an issue. Um, and there's no way that the fix could have been already... Well, I don't know. Maybe a fix did already get promoted to Lee Chess. It would surprise me. Um, given how uncommon that sort of position is in Racing Kings and how not everybody plays Racing Kings. You'd really have to be testing that a lot to find that. Um, so there's not so much urgency in getting a fix promoted, but it's still good to test it. Clear, oops, clear, stockfish UCI, stoption name UCI variant, Value Racing Kings. Position FEN. <laughs> uh, I typoed. Okay, we're going to try that again. Um, 
set option name UCI variant value racing kings position FEN that D shows the position go depth 99 okay mate and two g6 e8 c5 b3 g7 f8 g6 e8 queen e8 um oh there's the bishop on g2 oh i was thinking well surely i could play rook f8 i could play queen e8 but this rook b8 complicates everything leaving open the a8 square but a8's already covered by the bishop Oh my goodness. So yeah, black's best move is just to make some random move with, like, the knight to b3. Doesn't really matter because all black's moves are awful, and then you play king f8 and you win. Um, yeah, so any piece to the back rank wins that. So that works uh, as it should. Uh, so let's add to the benchmark positions. Wait, is that the position? Is that the one we just looked at? Yes, it is. So I was going to go add that, but it's already been added. Okay, cool. Nothing more to do then. Oh man, those guys are the best. They report the issue, figure it out, fix it, and not only patch it, but also add the position to the test suite. Um, so, yeah, that's awesome. Um, perhaps we should add this. Yeah, sure, why not? I was going to go ahead and add it myself, but um, Fabian beat me to it. That is amazing work. Yeah, Niklas does very well at identifying and explaining issues and fixing them. Although, this code base isn't his baby, it isn't his child. And then there's Fabian, um, who's also quite good at fixing things, and to a very good extent, um, describing them too. Um, so, they're both quite awesome, and it's good that they both contribute to um, addressing issues that I missed. Uh, oh, there's a new stockfish released to uh, leech us. Cool. Um, well, let me go back. Are there other... No, that was the one open issue I wanted to address. I was trying to address this regression in Racing Kings and going down this really myopic tunnel. Well, there's tons of ways to try to address an issue. Like I said, you could try to understand something to the nth degree and then begin to implement a solution. Or you can try several ideas and just experiment with them and see if any of them yield improvement. Um, and if you have a proper testing framework in place, it's a lot easier to do the latter than the former. Um, so. Here I'm actually taking a more agile method or methodology to it. Um, oh right, so I assigned Ian or Fabian to that. He's got that covered. But what was there not anything else I was trying to address there? Um, yeah, I was trying to fix. Uh, what was it? Right, so the thing I observed recently was make clean, make build, whatever architecture you're using, debug equals yes. And what I was trying to do is exercise um, a different use case. Um, oh, upstream, <laughs> it's a bit of a complicated story, but Upstream, they made a change which limited the number of pawns on a, for either player uh, to eight, which broke horde chess. So I suggested to uh, them upstream that, you know, if you're going to limit the number of pawns to eight, it probably wouldn't kill you to make an assertion 
somewhere that you can't have more than eight pawns. Um, they said, okay, great. Make a pull request, we'll probably accept it. So I did so. Of course, I had to merge said pull request into my repository where we allow for horde chess. And so I was trying to test um, the horde chess assertions to ensure that having this validation that's in place to make sure you can't have more than eight pawns per player does not adversely affect other variants like horde and like crazy house. Um, so in trying to test that, I encountered other problems with um, the assertions that were already in Stockfish. And so I was fixing those assertions, and in so fixing them, um, somehow I happened upon just this Racing Kings thing, not asserting something correctly. Um, so, yeah, now I think that's... Um, well, I'm not sure. We're going to see where we're at at the moment. Um, bench, stockfish bench space all. And so this is going to run through the entire test suite in debug mode until it encounters the first assertion that um, isn't working as it needs to. Because I think at this point the functionality works if you turn off all the assertions. What I'm trying to do is make sure that re-enabling the assertions doesn't break things. I think there's only one or two issues that were open as of this morning. I didn't document them all because, um, well, anybody could duplicate this by just um, setting debug equals yes. Like, for example, this one. Um, position one of two. Um, says that in check is not equal to position checkers. Uh, I think this has to do with Racing Kings, incidentally. That at the end of some variation, probably 11 moves deep for some position and some anonymous optimized function, um, in check is set equal to false, but checkers is set uh, to return something other than false. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to grab this, um, and just tag this on to the existing issue. Um, FYI, I will fix the assertion. Um, actually, FYI, uh, wait, wait, wait. What does the simplification do? Uh, do I, yeah, now I should open the simplification here. Open the diff there. And see, set check info. Good. Okay. Um, actually, let me check this out. How do I check this out? Um, this must have a name. Like, what's this D33 thing? It's got to be on some branch. Race Simp2. Um... Or, you know, maybe I just wait for uh, the simplification to come down the pipe um, and then test it. Um, actually, no, this should fix the problem. This and that. Um, Additionally, I can see that the simplification fixes um, an assertion bug I introduced. Um, make build arch equals whatever you want to, debug equals yes, stockfish. 
bunch, racing pings, dot dot dot, and then this stuff happens. Uh, um, not just I introduced, but let's grab this commit number. Wait, can I not select that text? Damn it. Okay, I'll go over here and select it. Um, there we go. Update comment. Perfect. So I think that fixes that open issue. Um, what remains to be tested is take racing kings out of the equation. Uh, race, change that to x race, make clean, make debug, or make build um, with debug enabled. Yes, there are going to be some warnings because um, method or function signatures. Um, are using parameters that aren't um, utilized inside the method or the function bodies. Um, so there's going to be a few warnings because we're not compiling with all the flags enabled. We're using x race instead of race. So a good chunk of code is disabled by uh, just changing the make file. The rationalization there was that Leechus wanted a way that if something went horribly wrong, that they could uh, hot fix a release by just changing the compile time options. Um, and still be able to uh, get the engine working for most of the variants. Um, initially, the rationalization was so you had one variant. And so there was one flag for the one variant. And just as we started adding more variants, we added more flags. So um, you have this ability to shut off anything that could be breaking the engine. Additionally, this kind of configuration, while it makes the coding slightly more complicated, it allows us to target um, whether a particular variance implementation has caused something that um, breaks or influences Stockfish as a whole. Um, so we can see if some combinations of flags work better or worse than others, and that helps us to pinpoint where a problem may have been introduced. Um, all right, so there's Crazy House with all the at symbols uh, indicating where pieces are dropped. Yeah, I'm not sure which variant is which inside any of this um, benchmarking stuff. Um, it's tricky to tell. Okay. Um, we had another assertion problem here. Uh, color of moved piece is equal to side to move. If I remember right, that was an issue with um, uh, move being retracted within the context of seeing um, whether a move uh, is advantageous or not. I think that pertained to atomic chess, if I remember right. Just it's kind of funny that like e4 b6 is the line that was being considered there, but um, now if we look at uh, position at CPP 1040 here, we're trying to check is the move piece the color of the side or yeah assert that that is the color of the side to move, um, but there is one. A solitary circumstance. Uh, you can even use the GNU debugger to verify this. Um, uh, or uh, static exchange evaluation uh, greater than or equal to function um, is utilizing this gives check function. Um, I could swear though this isn't three check. I think this. Or maybe it is. Maybe I'm getting confused. Yeah, this must have been three check. Never mind. I was confused by something else that I thought I saw for atomic. Um, but yeah, this position that CPP 
Um, this is where we're calling gives check without first verifying that this move is actually a move and not a retraction of a move. Um, and where this is used as a retraction is to see like, did I just move a piece to avoid this piece being captured? Um, and so what it does is it retracts the move and sees, well, how bad would things have been had the piece been captured? And then I recaptured on that square and then my opponent captures something and I capture something. And um, so if I hadn't made this move, what would have resulted versus what actually happened or what I'm actually considering doing if I move this? Like the example that I think was given was pawn d2, d4. This retracts d4 back to d2, checks like what captures would have happened and would that have been better or worse. Um, uh, so we can't simply check does a move gives give check here. Um, can we just have the two tabs here? Get yeah, this test. Oh, right. Uh, overview. So I had incorrectly submitted a test this morning. Um, I should actually first, well, I should do two things, fix this, um, but also demonstrate the bug here. Um, bench three check. There we go. Grab this text, and now go back to um, the code comment that was left here, which, uh, I'm sorry, the commit comment. Thanks, will do. May I submit this uh, with bounds negative three, one, two, fix. Or is there a better non a better non functional or do you think a better fix is possible? Better probably I don't know, simpler? Um, make build, um, debug this, yes. So, yeah, in hindsight, I should have fixed or submitted that as uh, with the bounds uh, for a bug fix. Um, Hopefully uh, he'll be okay with me submitting it that way. Uh, what I need to do for we for this uh, test framework we use Qt Chess CLI. The Qt Chess um, I think it's no, it's not Python based, is it? It uses Qt. I forget if it's like I think that's C based or C plus plus based. And like QT5. Um, it's been forever since I've looked at it, but there's a command line version. So far, it recognizes the variant name as 3check instead of uh, the letters 3 and then check. Um, so, yeah, I will make the change in the codes for uh, this sort of testing. But before I submit it, I want to understand. Um, May I submit this as a bug fix, or should I just submit this as an actual test? Um, the problem with submitting this as a bug fix is that it is a functional change. So uh, <laughs> I'm really banking on the fact that this should perform better, but I'm um, sorry, it should produce better results in self-play. 
and in playing against other opponents if desired, however we want to test it. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case. There, If it doesn't do well in self-play, then I need to find a better solution. But this does fix a bug, so there's some impetus to like get it in place, although the bug's only possible when you're trying to debug <laughs> uh, to troubleshoot something else that might have gone on. So, yeah, I'm not entirely decided on what to do with that, which is why I'm asking for opinions there. Um, so let me check. Uh, is this chess streamer gone live? If so, we'll move on over. Oh, never mind. Another chess streamer has gone live. Let's go enjoy that. Um, I'll work on the Lee Chess insufficient material test cases, trying to figure out what to put there uh, some other time. Um, so yeah, we've had a productive session, amazingly so, or at least uh, other people have been productive and I've shared with you the experience of what it's like to look at other people collaborating on your projects. Even though I myself have not written a single line of code this session, all I've done is just update my code and compile it and test things and verify others' results, but um, yeah, it's working with other people on open source projects. Um, it's like night and day um, working versus working on commercial stuff. So people are anxious and eager and willing to help. Um, and that's great, especially when there's this whole methodology that's well established for um, identifying issues and fixing them. And while we don't have the same formality in terms of a project manager and delegation of et cetera, et cetera, we at least generally agree upon the methodology of how we identify an issue, document it, fix it, test it, and release it. Um, and while I personally found it just, I don't know, I don't like testing in terms of just testing my own code. Testing your own code is just brutal because you've been thinking about an issue in one particular way. Anything you could possibly draft up to test it is going to be framed around that same mindset and not be thinking about all the lateral thoughts that are possibly related, which is why you document the way that you tested it and then share it with others and other people can come up with um, better tests or improve your tests, or at least verify that you tested it right. Um, so yeah, testing is just, I don't know, it's wonderful when you can do test-driven development and um, everybody agrees on the requirements and then the requirements get codified or codified as tests. And then all you have to do is write the code that um, passes testing and that's that. Um, understanding that you're not going to write the code in a way that cheats to pass the tests because they could always augment the test to say, well, you just, um, all you did is write basically the answer key. Um, they just need to add more tests and you would fail the new ones. So uh, you have to satisfy the tests in a satisfactory manner and not just cheat, but you know, if you're academically honest, um, it's great work in that way where the tests are written first and all you have to do is satisfy them or inform the people writing the tests that, you know, that seems actually a lot harder. Is, are we sure that this is what we want to go ahead and do and then prioritize accordingly. But yeah, this open source stuff is magic. It's like people around the world contribute and it all just works. And it's great when that can happen. Um, so yeah, hope you had fun. Hope you understood things a little bit better from having seen this. Either way, thanks for watching, and see you next time.